talking about spring breakers today. Uh, a Harmony Corinne film. And what Harmony Corinne likes to do is make extremely moral uh, films that masquerade as nihilistic ruminations. Harmony Corinne films can be very aggravating, but I like him. Uh, Spring Breakers. <laughs> Firstly, Ashley Benson and Vanessa Hudgens are incredible in the film. Uh, beautiful performances, beautiful girls. They're, they're amazing. Uh, James Franco is fun, I guess you can call him that. Uh, Selena Gomez is serviceable. Um, Rachel Corinne is forgettable. Gucci Mane. Gucci Mane's in this movie. That's cool. So is it a morality tale, or is it... Um, some sort of morbidly ironic statement about female empowerment. Um, obviously, why not both? But I think more than anything else, it is, uh, like I said earlier, it's a nihilistic rumination. I didn't say that. I said that it's uh, a, a deeply moral film masquerading as nihilistic rumination. I do find teen films uh, like this to be kind of annoying. I, I do think that being overly maudlin is very annoying, uh, but Harmony Corinne has a lot of inspired moments throughout this film. Whenever the girls put on the pink ski masks and, you know, wield AKs and shotguns, uh, that's very, very cool and very striking, and I think it's deeply philosophically and psychologically and erotically stirring in all the ways that Harmony is going for. He's talking about the eroticism of nihilism, or um, simply the inescapability of um, the corruption of innocence. Uh, or, I mean, he's talking about how fatally juxtaposed uh, these young girls are, where we're often given, like, soundscapes that are either like serene or um, glamorous uh, that are completely contrasted with uh, a kind of sleazy reality, which plays off beautifully with what might be the best um, captured scene in the whole movie, which is uh, the, the robbery at the beginning of the movie where they rob like a chicken shack or something. And uh, I, I, I just love the way that 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 uh, full sequence is choreographed and executed and how we go back to it over and over again. But um, it plays off um, what the girls are saying beautifully when Vanessa Hudgens and uh, Ashley Benson were like, just pretend it's a movie, pretend it's a video game. And you get the sense that these girls are definitely imagining that um, all the way up to its ultra-violent uh, finale. And I do like that we return to the scene of the robbery a, a few times when the girls are reliving it in the parking lot, kind of scaring the hell out of uh, Selena Gomez's character when they're reliving it. Um, and they're putting out a play in, in the parking lot to kind of show what they did. And uh, you can see that um, that the girls are kind of getting off to the, the, the ultimate uh, corruption of, of, of their innocence. Um, I wouldn't say purity, but just... Um, getting off to the nihilistic commitment that they made within that robbery, like committing to the bit entirely. Uh, they're, they're kind of reliving it in the parking lot as if it were theater. And of course, that, that plays beautifully off of pretend it's a movie, pretend it's a video game, pretend it's theater, pretend it's not real. And maybe Harmony is also saying the only way to get through life in the ultra-modern world is to pretend it's not real. You know, because James Franco's character is a cartoon. Uh, and, and the only way to interact with him is is in a cartoonish way. But nihilistic cartoons, um, very erotic, uh, for for all the wrong reasons. And uh, I thought that um, that that character was was ultimately very revealing. I didn't really get a whole lot out of uh, him acting like you know the movie is very loud with its meanings. You know, like like I'm not acting like I'm deeply analyzing the movie. Harmony Corinne has this terrible tendency of, of putting um, a megaphone over all of his themes and, and all over the subtext itself, right? He makes it the text. And he has James Franco looking over the ocean, St. Pete, and being like, watch out, girls, there's 
there's water down there. I, I can't do the James Franco thing. <laughs> but being from Florida, not far from St. Pete, uh, James Franco, that's a, that's a real caricature. You definitely meet people like that and the people you associated with. I'm sure I have. But um, I hate the loud metaphors of be careful with the water. There's a lot of sharks in there. Or like The way he behaves in a predatory way. Uh, the only cool part about that is that Harmony kind of reveals at least Ashley Benson and Vanessa Hudgens' characters to uh, truly be the, the most dangerous and capable ones. Um, all, almost like uh, James Franco's character was a sort of um, like Aquarian John the Baptist type of uh, alpha projector, right? Like, like he was leading the way, like uh, maybe baptize them in the the dirty, filthy um, beer bong waters of uh, of Saint Pete. You know, to be baptized by a nihilistic shark. That's that's one kind of colorful way to look at it. I do think that the sound design is. Uh, outrageously good. Um, very absorbing, very immersive. Uh, I think that this movie has an extremely good vibe. The atmospherics are 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 incredible. Um, I just don't necessarily appreciate it when <laughs> when when directors uh, do this kind of um, real or gritty or under the surface of a superficial beauty thing like I, I i find that really boring but harmony doesn't like commit to that entirely because like i said we have them wearing these these silly pink um ski masks and wearing their bikinis and holding shotguns and singing along to james franco playing britney spears on a lone piano outside of a kind of rundown mansion that's that's cartoonish. That's exciting. I mean, maybe this is truly like a nihilistic cartoon that can't help but be excessively sentimental and moral. These girls are calling their parents. Um, the, these girls are like are, are, are leaving. Selena Gomez is grounded by some sort of uh, some sort of like religious foundation, and I think that that's bored and tired. But it, it speaks to the sentimentality that is definitely within the film itself. This film is bemoaning the activities until it doesn't. Right, like this film is is mourning the the corruption of of, of, of innocence throughout the film until. It, not until it uh, decides that no this is actually empowering which i think is a lot cooler and a lot more radical to say like i like ashley benson and vanessa hudgens's characters fully becoming ultra violent cartoon characters by the end of the piece uh and it's not necessarily um providing a value judgment to that near the end, because maybe Harmony has finally done what he's been trying to do since Gummo and Kids, where he's like trying to uh, nihilistically wound the audience so much that, that, that they don't believe that value exists at all. Maybe Spring Breakers is the only place he actually did that. And you, and you realize that when, you, that when you don't find things as, as uh, intrinsically valuable, then you are freed, then you are empowered. It's a liberating kind of feeling that comes from nihilism. Spring Breakers is uh, gen generally upsetting and I think kind of um, scary because it, it says there's an inescapability to uh, falling completely into nihilism. Not necessarily being seduced by it, but seducing it, right? Because uh, these girls are going out and, and they're and they're seducing nihilism incarnate. And it makes them like excited. It makes them happy. I guess a lot of people don't like this movie because like they feel it was a bait and switch of um kind of the marketing. Because you know, Vanessa Hudgens, Selena Gomez and uh Ashley Benson. Can't forget about Ashley Benson. Wow, stunning. <laughs> but like, you know, you, you get pretty little liars and uh high school musical and what like Wizards of Waverly Place. Like you know, uh, p people have this m morbid sexual curiosity to see. Uh, well, that's the thing, right? Because like they they wanted to see Selena Gomez in a bikini. They wanted to see Vanessa Hudgens in a bikini. They wanted to see these girls that that they knew from material that was made directly for children on the screen, scantily clad and hypersexualized and 
Harmony did that, but he didn't do that in a way that is that makes you feel good, right? And that I think that's why people have an issue with the movie. People love watching Innocence Corrupted. They love it. They they love it when Britney Spears and Lindsay Lohan and Amanda Bynes lose their minds and lose their clothes. People love it because people are <laughs> demonstrably uh, 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 cool and 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 um, fed primarily by their primal instincts. So people wanted Spring Breakers to be a raunchy, hypersexualized sort of comedy about about a bunch of girls at spring break who they think are attractive or who are attractive, like inarguably. And Harmony like gives you the corruption of innocence. Like he gives you that the innocence corrupted, but um it feels more like a snuff film than you know, American Pie. Like, I don't know necessarily what people thought it would be, but I, I, I can speak, at least bottom line is people wanted to go into this movie to to see a certain kind of uh, naive innocence be corrupted, the innocence of, uh, of the Disney Channel, specifically. And Harmony gave you that. Harmony completely gave you that, but he made you complicit in uh, the corruption of the innocence. And maybe that's why people found the experience so unenjoyable because uh, it made them feel criminal. Maybe we all are criminal. Maybe we're all we're all complicit in in the universal corruption of innocence. Spring Break is also, I think, an interesting title because Spring Awakenings and Spring Renewals. Uh, uh, spring generally represents a sort of rebirth, and our, our two final girls near the end are certainly reborn into something. Alien, even. I mean, James Franco's obsessed with calling himself an alien. Um, they're they're reborn into something uh, unmistakably powerful, dangerous, and sexy, right? Ultimately, that's what happens. Um, but they're not free. You get a sense that uh, the the whole film feels uh, claustrophobic, even though we're looking at like you know we're looking at at, at coastlines and looking at the saint pete kind of skyline um we're looking at cityscapes within soundscapes and the ocean's always there uh a, a, a symbol of um of freedom and stuff and the cars play a pretty, pretty big symbolic role in this which has always been um, a uniquely american symbol of freedom and independence yet the film itself feels very claustrophobic due to harmony corinne's like pretty intelligent design of uh, making uh, the, the film itself feel trapped. You know, like, there's no atmospheric difference to when the girls are in a prison cell than to when they are in the backseat of James Franco's car. Like, the entire world makes them feel trapped. And then that's when the world victimizes these girls. And victimizes Franco's character, too. Victimizes all of us. We feel so trapped that the only natural thing to do when you feel trapped, when you feel imprisoned wrongfully or, or even rightfully, who gives a fuck, whenever you feel trapped, the, the only thing you can do, the only human response to that is to reject it and to rebel against it, and if that doesn't work, to treat it violently. And that's what these girls do to the human condition that has, uh, that has completely um, surrounded them. That... They couldn't help but enter enter into because that's the state of um, of existence, you know. Uh, I think Harmony Corinne made a pretty good movie. I just uh, like I, I'm expressing all of these um, kind of mentalities and philosophies that I found within the movie, I, but I, I disagree with like all of them. I don't think that Harmony is right about any of these things. Uh, And I don't even believe that he thinks that he's right because the morality and the sentimentality is kind of, it, it overwhelms the denialistic ruminations that I think uh, this film does best. You know, this film is better at being nihilistic than it is at being sentimental. Um, and harmony doesn't necessarily balance out the two uh, with a lot of finesse. Uh, it, it's it's a good movie, and that that it's not like an unbalanced film or anything. It's just that uh, at the at the end of the day, you you leave the film feeling more mournful than liberated, more more trapped uh, 
and and victimized than you do driving off into the sunset. Uh, and I think that that harmony wanted you to feel a little bit liberated, like just like how the movie's mournful until it's not. I think you're supposed to feel trapped within the atmospherics and and the sound design and and the the, the cityscape itself within St. Petersburg. I think you're supposed to feel trapped. Until you're not anymore, until the girls are literally Ashley Benson and Vanessa Hudgens literally driving off into the sunset in a badass sports car. You know, like like they have kind of blank expressions on their face, but they're still driving off into that sunset. And we feel dead inside as viewers, right? I don't think that was necessarily the point of it. I don't think that was really the intention of it. Because I think that when when the girls lean down, um, the last thing we see in the movie is them like bending over to kiss James Franco's corpse, uh, like through their ski masks, and then run away. And the camera tilts upside down to give us, you know, it, it's, this film's a lot about giving us a different perspective on eroticism, nihilism, and sentimentality. So like we, it's like the, the an upside down kingdom, so to speak, and I mean that with every religious and Christian connotation possible, because the film is kind of invested in uh, uh, de uh, de deconstructing um, both both chastity and, and sexual liberation. But I digress. Uh, when they kiss James Franco at the end of the movie, I think that is um, very romantic and actually full of passion. Like I, I don't, I don't buy the blank faces. I, I. And they're kissing their John the Baptist of uh, of nihilism, their prophet of anarchy. It's full of passion and and full of a, a thankful sort of remorse. Like so, I would say that the error is that the girls should have been just completely happy at the end of the movie, kind of smiling in their car as they're driving off into the sunset. I think that would have been actually subversive, rather than leaving the audience feeling mournful over a lost sense of innocence or sentimentality when i think a part of harmony corinne's like sophisticated language is that no one was really innocent to begin with no one's innocent to begin with not when we're born into a universe that is this narcissistic and uh this claustrophobic you know and why do you feel claustro everything's bearing down on you alcohol drugs sex pop music uh the violence is all it's everything i think the film should have made young people want to go on spring break and go on a crime spree and that's what i think would have been a truly radical thing but but no spring breakers makes you want to stay in prayer group even though like harmony shows us that that is a, like, a pretty unrewarding experience and that the girls there are catty and that the guy seems to be full of shit um, the guy even quotes Corinthians, like the part where Paul is being like, no matter what temptation you, you, um, no matter what you're tempted with, God will always provide you a way out. Like you won't be overwhelmed by temptation. You'll always be given a way out. And I thought that the like implied poetics of, of that and like of, of the film that followed, of all the content that followed afterwards is that God also gives you a way in. And that's unforgivable. I think it is well made, and I think you, you you get a lot from it. And there's a lot to talk about when it comes to um, Spring Breakers. There's a lot to talk about, as as per usual with the Harmony Corinne film. Harmony always offers a lot of um, a lot of discourse, a lot of things to kind of hyperfixate on and kind of ruminate over in your mind. Uh, there's a lot of meanings to his movies. I find his movies pretty aggravating, but I really like the opportunity to engage with his uh, unique brand of sentimental nihilism. I always enjoy it. Thank you for watching.